Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at building other branches of Blender and how to create your own branches on your local machine, how to switch between them, and how to keep separate builds of them so that you don't have to rebuild every single time you change branches. So it's quite a bit, so let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to recommend is that you download Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is a code editor from Microsoft that's become quite popular in the last few years. I would highly recommend, no matter what kind of coding you're doing, that you check out VS Code if you haven't already. You can get VS Code at code.visualstudio.com. It's a free download and an easy install. Now my version of VS Code here has a few extensions that I've already added, but what you're going to want to work with for VS Code should come with it straight out of the box. When you launch VS Code, what you're going to do is open a folder. You can go up to File and say Open Folder. Assuming that you followed the instructions in my previous video, which you can check out here, you'll want to navigate to your C drive to the Blender-Git folder to the Blender folder. So once you're in this folder, choose the option Select Folder. This will have the Blender-Git repository as the working directory for VS Code. You'll notice on the sidebar this Git icon. Go ahead and click on it. You'll notice here at the top that it has your Blender Git, and next to it is a Git icon with the name Master. This means that your code is currently reflecting the master branch of Blender. If you go up to the terminal menu and select New Terminal, it will open a terminal window on the bottom of the right-hand side. Now, by default, it will probably open a PowerShell terminal. We want a command prompt terminal. So next to this plus button is a down arrow. Choose this and then choose command prompt. This command prompt will automatically open in the base directory that we had selected. So from here, I can easily do my Blender make update. Now that that's done, I could easily run my make command and build Blender from here. If all I was ever doing was building the master branch of Blender, that's probably what I would do. However, since now I want to move to building different branches of Blender, I'm going to want to keep separate build directories. One way you can accomplish this is by using an additional parameter on our make command. So here, instead of just typing make and pressing enter, I'm going to type in make build dir equals builds slash master. Before I hit run, I'm going to open up my Windows Explorer. I'm going to navigate into my Blender Git folder. And in my Blender Git folder, I'm going to create a new folder called Builds. So I'll just right click in this folder, go to New Folder, and type in Builds. Now, whenever I do a build, I'll make sure to set the build directory to a subdirectory of this folder. That way, all of my builds will be consolidated in a single place. However, by building them into separate folders underneath Builds, I can keep them separate. That way, the next time I rebuild a different branch, it only has to rebuild the parts of the build that are new, rather than having to do a full rebuild every single time. If you're switching back and forth between branches quite a bit, this can be very helpful. As well, I build my master branch daily, but then if I'm developing something new, I'll keep that in a separate branch, in a separate build completely. Then if I want to use the master build to do some actual blending, I can do that without my development builds getting in the way. Back in VS Code, I've got my make command ready to go. So I've got make builder equals builds slash master. So here, I'll hit enter. Now that this build is completed, I can go to my blender git slash builds slash master directory to find my build. And here it is. I could run it from here. Or from this command prompt, I could type in c colon backslash blender git slash builds slash master slash bin slash release slash blender.exe. Now, because I want to make this easier on myself, and I'm very apt to miskey some things, I built a couple of batch files to help myself out. If I go up to this top button on the left-hand panel, it will show me my files. Here in the Blender folder, I'm going to click on this New File button, 
and I'm going to create a file called bld.bat. This is a Windows batch file. I named it BLD because that's short for build. Now in this batch file, I'm going to add one command. Just like we did before to build Blender, we typed in make build dir equals builds slash master. If I save this batch file and then run it, it will build whatever branch I'm currently on and stick its results in the builds slash master folder. However, I want this to work for any branch I'm currently on. So what I'm going to do is remove the word master here and replace it with percent one. This means it will take the first command line argument of my batch file and stick it in after the builds backslash. So if I save this and now in my blender dash get slash blender folder type in bld master, it will run the command make builder equals builds slash master. In the same way, I wanted a shortcut to be able to run my newly built blender. So in my blender folder over here, I'm going to click the new file button and create a file called run.bat. If you look up a few lines in our previous build, you'll actually see the location of the blender.exe file. That's the executable that we want to run. So what I'm going to do is highlight this, press Ctrl C, go up to my run.bat, and press Ctrl V. Now, just like in my build.bat, I'm going to replace master with percent one and save that. Now, if I type in run master, that will run the blender located in the builds slash master subfolder. One thing you will notice now is that under your git icon, you have a two. That's because you've added two files to your blender repository and git thinks you might want to add these to the source code. Well, that's not exactly true. We just want to hide these from Git. Now, there is a file in Git called .gitignore, where you can add file names for Git to ignore. The problem with adding it to that file is if you change .gitignore, Git thinks, oh, you've changed .gitignore, you want to commit that too. Well, we don't want that either. So instead, we need to edit another file. If we go to the file menu and say open file, if you have hidden files shown in Windows by default, you'll see a .git folder. If you don't see this, simply click on the folder in your top toolbar and after Blender, type in slash .git. Under this folder, there's a folder called info and in that folder, there's a file called exclude. Go ahead and open this file. Here, you can add files that Git should completely ignore. So we're gonna add our two batch files to this that way, we won't have to see them in our changes list all the time. I'll just come down to the end of this file and add bld.bat and run.bat. I'll save this file and close it. Now, if I go back to my Git tab and press the large refresh icon at the on the Blender line, those two files will disappear. Git will completely exclude those from any consideration in the future. Now, say we wanted to build a different branch. If I come up to my Blender line here and click on the master icon, I should see a bunch of entries marked origin forward slash. These are the branches that exist at git.blender.org. Later, if you create your own branches, you'll see those listed at the top. For now, I'm gonna scroll down to the origin slash cycles X remote branch. You'll see here, this line is now changed to blender git cycles X. That means that all of the changes that are tracked for the Cycles X branch have now been applied to the files on my hard drive. So if I come down to my terminal and type in BLD, running my own batch file, and then say Cycles-X, the first time I do this, a new folder will be created under my builds folder for the Cycles X build. Or if I already have one, it will just continue updating the build that's already there. And now that this is complete, I can use my batch file to say, to say run cycles X. And now I'm using the cycles X rendering engine.
which I must say, is very speedy. Finally, we want to take a look at how we can create our own local branches, so that if in the future you want to make some changes to Blender yourself, you can do that. Up here under the Git menu, I'm going to click where it says Cycles X, and I can go back to Master. While I'm on Master, it's always a good idea to do a Make Update. This will make sure that any new commits to the Blender source code will be downloaded to your computer. If there haven't been any changes, it will be a pretty quick process. Now that that's done, I can come up here under the ellipsis menu at the end of the Blender Git line, go down to Branch, and say Create Branch. I'll call this one a really creative name, like My Branch. You'll now see that My Branch shows up in the Blender Git menu line. If I go to my Explorer, drill down into the Source menu, Blender, Nodes, Geometry, Nodes, and then say, pull up the, the Node Geometry Curve Primitive Line file, say I wanted to go in here and make a change, like renaming one of the outputs. So instead of Curve, maybe I would want to have this output Johnny's Curve. Now of course this isn't the only place I would need to change this. I would have to change it in another place in this file so that Blender doesn't crash. Having edited this file, you'll see under my Git tab that one change has been made. It lists the file that has the change, and I can click on it. And if I do, I'll get this view of the file that shows me the file name with working tree in parentheses. It shows me that this line, 33, has been deleted from the original file, and this line has been put in its place. On this sidebar, I see that there's another change partway down, where I removed this line 126 and replaced it with a new one. Now I could come down here and type in BLD my branch. Now that the compile is done, I can use my batch file to say run my branch. We'll jump over to geometry nodes, add a new one here, add a curve line, and you'll notice the output is now named Johnny's Curve. If you haven't used Git before, this video really isn't intended as a full Git tutorial. However, I will tell you, if you want to change back to a different branch, if I want to save what I've done, I'm going to either need to stash my changes, which means temporarily put them aside, or commit them to my branch. So to do that here, under Changes, I would click the plus sign. This will stage my changes. You can stage a bunch of changes together. Once my changes are in staged changes, I'll enter a commit message. I could say, change the name of the output and then press this check mark to commit. Now, my branch shows no changes. However, while I'm on my branch, I can see the differences between my branch and master by typing in git diff master, and it will show me something called a diff output. It shows me where in the files are changed, what lines have been removed, and what lines have been added. However, this might not be what I want. If I just wanted to see a list of files that was changed, I could type in the same command, git diff master, and then add the option dash dash name only. And it will show me a list of files that have changed between my branch and the master branch. A super helpful feature of VS Code is if I hover over this file name and it underlines, I can press control click to open that file in the editor. I use this feature quite a bit. Now that my changes have been committed to my branch, I can easily change back to master and run make update or anything else that I want to do. In later videos, we'll look at how we can keep our own branches up to date with the master branch. But I think that's enough for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you're finding this helpful and I hope it's inspiring you to make something awesome. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, I'd really appreciate it if you did. Anyhow, it's been fun and until next time, I'll catch you later.